Hi developers, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, um, I will show you how to make a Shimmer skeleton component, um, which is pretty common for um, complicated uh, UI when you're loading uh, the data from backend. Uh, you normally would like to show some loading indicator. Uh, it's uh, pretty common to show a spinner, you know, a, um, a image or something that is spinning um, but which is um, pretty common but it doesn't have very good user experience um, because you don't have a overview of what the ui would look like after the, uh, the data is fetched so the um, skeleton is an alternative um, so it will provide more detail of um, how the ui the final ui will look look like um, so, for example, in this um, Figma design, you can see in here, there's, uh, you can imagine that will be a big block of content or an image. And this uh, avatar kind of thing is it's very common and to have a psycho or rendered uh, avatar. So, uh, even you don't have an image in it, um, in the user's mind, it, will, it can be a avatar and this is a headline this is a description something like that and um, uh, similarly for this one it could be an article or some blog post uh, the, the thumbnail and you can see there are a few actions um, on the bottom it will give you the user a more refined um, the, the shape of the final UI and in this video I'm going to show you how to make it one uh, with uh, Tailwind CSS. It's, a, it's surprisingly easy to implement. And we're going to use React and use V to generate um, a, uh, you know, the empty React application. And then we will install the Tailwind CSS. Uh, and having that set up, we can start working on the, um, the skeleton um, component. And uh, let's get started. Uh, the very first thing you will need, of course, is uh, Vite. Uh, but it's very easy to install. We can simply uh, go to Tailwind, the document. It has or actually has a section for um, implement to in install the, the Vite. Uh, so basically, you do npm create uh, Vite latest and give it your um, project name. And then uh, you can set a template. I'm going to use React TS, so I will simply put this one uh, in my terminal and correct a application, a, you know, and the correct application. You can call it like a skeleton uh, demo or something like that. I have already corrected uh, the, the folder, uh, so I will skip this step. But it's um, once once you have this installed, you will need to install the Tailwind um, with this command. It's pretty straightforward as well. And uh, after this step, you will need to uh, define what you will let Tailwind watch. Um, so basically, we will let Tailwind to watch all the HTML. And uh, in the source folder, we will let it um, to monitoring the TypeScript or and the TSX changes. I have already done that, so I will quickly show you what I have in my local. So in my tailwind.config, uh, you can see it's monitoring the index HTML. Uh, in the source folder, it's expecting all the uh, TS and the TSX. Uh, and um, after that, you will need the only final step is to put these tailwind uh, directives in your index CSS which I've already done. So uh, once you put this in, you have the tailwind.convict.js set up. And then the final step is to run um, the yarn run dev. And it will launch your, uh, your application, your local 5173. And uh, if you go back to the code, to see what is in the application. There is simply a hello skeleton text. 
and uh, if you go to the browser it's hello skeleton uh, yeah that's about the setup uh, now let's jump into the real implementation all right so we have all the uh, necessary packages installed we have uh, uh, tell when the configured correctly so let's uh, start to implement the um, skeleton component so let's firstly put everything in the center of the page uh, with Tailwind it's pretty easy let me uh, minimize the file explorer so we'll need to add a class name uh, it will be um, um, you know um, margin max wise like a median and the margin to be auto and uh, for the uh, margin in the y axis we will make it you know 10 uh, and save you can see it will align all everything in the center um, and uh, we also don't need this one anymore all right so a scheduled component is actually nothing but a um, div with a very subtle background color and uh, you can make it the shape different like uh, with the height and the width. Uh, the, the most important thing when you implement it is uh, you need to try to make it as uh, similar to the actual component as possible. So we have a mock-up of this, you know, uh, articular card or product card. You will need to, uh, you know, kind of measure how high and wide of the, comp the actual component and then create these um, placeholders correspondingly. So let's uh, start to be making this one first. So let's make the container first. Uh, we'll pick a, make a container and the container has a simple flex layout and the flex, the direction of the flex is uh, row. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. And oh, probably we need to set a background color to uh, 100. So as you can see, there's nothing here yet because the height of the children is zero. There's no uh, children yet. So we will gradually adding more um, children component to the container and it will uh, gradually expanding the uh, the parents. So let's adding the first card. Um, so we need some background color for the uh, child. Make it 200 and it's a rounded corner and uh, the Y's will be 32 maybe. Uh, and the height is let's put it 20 and give it look like and see how and and uh, and see how it looks like mm, okay not too bad we can see that thing and we need to adding some padding to the parents let's see it's four um, and uh, don't worry about the uh, ex expanding too much at the moment um, and also we need to make the parent render corner as well as we don't need any content in the um, div so we can close it off and we will need another div for the avatar stuff let's say um, we have another avatar component um, let's see we have a similar background uh, 200 rendered for uh, it's a four sized and we will need it to be eight height is eight as well um, oh, sorry I, I think I make it around it's, it should be column direction um, so now we have a um, the um, avatar here and we will need to add a few a little bit gap here it's one uh, RAM gap so uh, we will close the off the avatar and then let's make the two headlines uh, and uh, we'll put that into another div uh, so for the first line uh, it's same we we'll have a background color and uh, it's rounded a little bit and the white will be let's say it's 20 something and the height will be uh, let's put it three here see how it goes uh, all right, so it shows up in the bottom. We will need to 
make this as a flex component again and make it a flex row. All right. Uh, and we need a small gap here as well. So we make it one pixel uh, and we will need two of them here. Uh, and uh, the other one, we can make it thinner, but we will uh, make it a little bit um, longer, I guess. Let's put it 28. I don't know, it may be too much. Is that any 24? Yep, so we have the 24 here. Now we have the two headlines. We'll need to have some, um, either we can add some padding or we can make this one another flex box, flex, flex column. And we can add a simple gap here, one pixel, a uh, one ram. And we, want, we would like to make the uh, Handline to align center align with the uh, the avatar. So that means we will need a empty atom center to make them aligned uh, Yeah, that's pretty much about this first one, but the only thing left is the background is not correct the setting um, We can simply put the flags on the parent to ask it to not take all the uh, available wise um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much about the very first one. Well, we probably need to address the padding here to be make a three. It, it looks like strange uh, for the paddings here. Uh, what happened if I put the padding zero? Yeah, you can see it's still there is some gap here. I guess it's because this wax here. Look, let me uh, narrow down this one to 16 and this one to be 20 uh, Let's see and then we can gradually incre in Increase the padding here to be two uh, Yeah, I think it looks fine. Maybe three uh, All right, let me make it three or maybe um, in the Y is three and in X is two um, yeah, it looks much nicer. If we want to make it like a reusable component, we probably can extract this one into a separate component. We can do that by using uh, extract component and call it um, card skeleton it's function component. And we can have multiple. Uh, and uh, we probably can add a gap between them to be one or two. Now we have uh, <coughs> a bunch of more. And the final touch will be, we can add a few, uh, you know, the, um, the animation to make it more like a loading status. Uh, we can do that by using the Tailwind built-in animations called animation pose. And you can see it tends to gray out the opacity uh, degrees and then it's come back to uh, the full component and then it's like a breathing kind of effect. You can also add in your own uh, animation to it to make it even uh, fancier, which you probably have already seen in uh, LinkedIn or Twitter. So to summarize, there are a few uh, points here. The one is try to use the subtle background color or color uh, as subtle as possible, should I say, uh, that, that will like make it less it, distracting. Uh, the second one is try to make it as accurate, like the width or height, the gap, uh, should be pretty similar to the actual component you are implementing uh, when the data is ready. And the third one is adding some final uh, animation to it to make it even nicer uh, and finally this is a part of my uh, night or did fetching free tutorial and I will link it in, in the description below uh, please check it out if you are interested in uh, did fetching patterns in react all right uh, that's what I have for today I hope you find it useful uh, and um, try to implement one by yourself to mimicking your uh, real design and uh, 
um, apply it to, to, to your application that can enhance the user experience. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next time. Bye-bye.